Buenos días. Hola a todos. Bienvenidos a mi canal. Me llamo Marsha Robinson Smith. All right. So in today's video, I am going to be looking at the imperfect tense. So I'm just doing a review. So let me just share my screen so that we can begin. All right. So here we go. Review on the imperfect tense, el pretérito imperfecto, a continuar. So today, in today's objectives, you should be able to use the imperfect tense correctly in speech and writing, conjugate verbs accurately in the imperfect tense, use the imperfect tense to talk about past events, listen for detail, create a dialogue, or comic strip, write a report about the things others used to do when they were younger. So, first you need to know what the imperfect tense is. The imperfect tense, or preterito imperfecto, is a past tense used in Spanish to describe ongoing or habitual actions in the past as well as to set the scene by describing conditions and circumstances that existed in the past. Unlike the preterite tense, which is used for completed actions, the imperfect tense emphasizes the continuity or repetition of past actions and states. A continuar. So, we are now going to look at when to use the imperfect tense. So we use the imperfect tense to talk about repeated actions or events done in the past, to describe the characteristics, qualities, feelings, or habits of persons in the past, to talk about the time, dates, conditions, or the weather in the past, to talk about something that was going on before an interruption, to tell your age or a person's age in the past, to talk about things that someone would normally do, to give background information, setting the scene by describing the context or circumstances. So I got this timeline and I want you to use this as a visual description to remember when to use the imperfect tense. So here we have the preterite tense and you see that small dot. Yes, there are both past tenses, but the imperfect, as you see, it's longer. So it refers to ongoing, repeated actions. So it's not something that happened now and that's it. It, it describes a habitual actions in the past, all right? And when you cannot give a definite time period in the past, you also use the imperfect tense for that. So please remember this visual description. I find it very interesting and appealing, thanks to this teacher who created it. All right, so we are now going to continue and we'll be looking at the usage of the imperfect tense. So let's see the imperfect tense in action. So the first one we looked at was repeated occurrences. Now, look at this example. Como niño, yo chupaba el dedo. As a child, I used to suck my finger. So as a child, there is no definite description there as to how you started when you you started or when you stopped sucking your finger. It describes a long period of time in the past. As a child, I used to. So when you hear the words used to, you definitely know that that implies the imperfect tense and the imperfect tense is required. Let's look at another example. Description in the past. Maria era bonita y simpática. Time, weather, or conditions in the past. Eran las seis cuando empezó a llover. 
hacía sol ayer en la tarde. Cuando era niño, siempre jugaba en el parque cerca de mi casa. So remember, once you're talking about the time or the weather in the past, it requires the imperfect tense and not the preterite tense. A continual. So we have three more to go. Actions in progress before an interruption. Example, ellos estaban mirando la televisión cuando Roberto se cayó. They were doing what? Watching the TV when, so there is the in interruption, Roberto fell. All right? Things someone would normally do. So things that, you know, you find customary. In the past, for example, cuando yo visitaba el campo, iba al río con mis amigos. So whenever it was, when I visited the country, I used to go to the river with my friends. Or I would go to the river with my friends. Telling age in the past. Mi hermano. Se casó con Felina cuando tenía 26 años. So my brother married Felina when he was 26 years old. Okay. A continuar. So we are now going to look at the conjugations of the imperfect tense. And we are looking at AR. ER and IR verbs, as well as some irregular verbs. So for AR verbs, we drop the AR and add the following endings to this stem. So these endings are ABA. So let's say we're using the verb cantar, which means to sing. So the verb would be cantaba in the first person. The second person, cantabas, and the ending is abas. Third person, Aba, just like the first person. So the first and third person singular have the same verb ending, okay? As well as the, the usted form. So cantaba, he or she or you in the polite form, usted cantaba. Abamos, cantábamos. We used to sing. Aban, cantaban. So now let's look at ER and IR verbs. So drop the ER or IR and add the following endings to the stem of the verb. So we are looking at the verbs comer and partir. Comer, partir. Okay? So comer is an ER verb and partir, IR ending verb. All right, so we know that both ER and IR verbs have the same conjugations in the imperfect tense, all right? And in other tenses too, they share the same verb ending. So in the first person, it's IA, second person, IAS, third person, IA, First person plural, iamos, and third person plural, ian, or second person plural in the ustedes form. All right, so now let's look at some irregular verbs. And please note that there are three verbs that are irregular in the imperfect tense. All right, so these are ser, and the, the first person conjugation of ser is era, second, eras, third, era, first person plural, eramos, and we have era. Now let's look at the other one. So these verbs are ser and ir, okay? And the conjugations are as follow. Iba, ibas, iba, ibamos, iban. And the other one is ver. Veía, veías, veía, veíamos, veían. 
So remember that these three verbs are the only verbs that are irregular in the imperfect tense. A continuar. So now, you're going to do a listening activity, audition. So here you're going to, you can pause the video and copy these questions, okay? And you're going to listen to the audio in order to get the answers to these questions. So respond to the following in English. Responde a las siguientes en inglés. ¿Dónde trabaja Marsha? ¿Cuál es su profesión? ¿Dónde trabajaba y qué hacía? Como niña, ¿qué quería ser ella? ¿Cuántos años tenía cuando cambió de opinión de esta profesión? ¿Qué se imaginaba hacer? Ok, so, screenshot or pause to write these questions. Now we are going into the audio. Hola a todos, me llamo Marsha. Soy profesora de español en la escuela secundaria Kings Hill. Antes, trabajaba en el colegio secundario técnico Kingston. Allí, enseñaba español e inglés. Esto me gustó mucho. Sin embargo, como niña, quería ser científica porque estaba fascinada mucho con la naturaleza, especialmente con los animales. Y soñaba con ser científica cada noche y me imaginaba hacer investigaciones en un laboratorio. Cuando tenía 12 años, cambié de opinión y por eso decidí ser profesora de español después de graduarme de la escuela secundaria. Así, estudié para ser maestra en el colegio para maestros en Shortwood. ¿Qué tal tú? ¿Con qué soñabas como niño o niña? Dime. One more time. You can always pause the video. Hola a todos, me llamo Marsha. Soy profesora de español en la escuela secundaria Kings Hill. Antes, trabajaba en el colegio secundario técnico Kingston. Allí, enseñaba español e inglés. Esto me gustó mucho. Sin embargo, como niña, quería ser científica porque estaba fascinada mucho con la naturaleza, especialmente con los animales. Y soñaba con ser científica cada noche y me imaginaba hacer investigaciones en un laboratorio. Cuando tenía 12 años, cambié de opinión y por eso decidí ser profesora de español después de graduarme de la escuela secundaria. Así, estudié para ser maestra en el colegio para maestros en Shortwood. ¿Qué tal tú? ¿Con qué soñabas como niño o niña? Dime. Okay, now let us look at the responses. Las respuestas. So here are the answers to the questions about Marsha's introduction. So the first question asked, ¿Dónde trabaja Marsha? She works at Kensil High School. ¿Cuál es su profesión? She is a teacher. ¿Dónde, traba, ¿Dónde trabajaba y qué hacía? She worked at Kingston Technical High and she taught English and Spanish there. ¿Cómo niña qué quería ser? She wanted to be a scientist. ¿Cuántos años tenía cuando cambió de opinión de esta profesión? She was 12 years old when she changed her mind about this. Okay, about what she initially wanted to be, which is, or which was a scientist. Next question. ¿Qué se imaginaba hacer? She would imagine herself doing experiments in a lab. A continuar. So, 
I hope that you were successful in your listening activity. Or if you didn't get these responses, you can always go back and play. Keep replaying until you hear and you can agree with the responses that are here. All right, a continuar. So now we're going to be looking at some writing. All right, redacción and... So here we have a story and you are going to write the verbs in brackets in the imperfect tense. So, veranos mágicos en el campo. We need to know or to make this story come alive rather by conjugating the verbs that are in brackets and of course in the imperfect tense. So, screenshot or Pause the video and quickly fill in your answers so we can see. You have, uh, I'm going to give you five seconds to do that again. Yes. Now, let's go for the answers. Las respuestas. So what do you have? ¿Qué tienes? All right. All right. So I hope that you have the same responses like what I have. And if not, you did well. And I'm proud of you just the same. Okay. So you can always use this as a point of correction. All right. So I am going to read. So let us read now. Vamos a leer. En mi niñez. Todos los veranos, mi familia y yo íbamos a la casa de mis abuelos en el campo. La casa estaba rodeada de campos verdes y flores de todos los colores. Cada mañana, mi abuela preparaba un desayuno delicioso con huevos frescos y pan casero. Mis hermanos y yo jugábamos en el jardín, trepábamos árboles y ropas. Recogíamos frutas. Nos encantaba explorar el bosque cercano y contar historias de aventuras mientras caminábamos por los senderos. Todo era tranquilo y lleno de alegría y siempre esperábamos con ansias esos días de verano. Por las tardes solíamos ayudar a mi abuelo en su pequeña granja. Él nos enseñaba cómo cuidar de los animales y cultivar el huerto. Aprendíamos a plantar semillas, regar las plantas y recoger las verduras maduras. Después de un día de trabajo, nos sentábamos todos juntos en la terraza a disfrutar de la brisa fresca mientras mi abuela nos contaba historias de su juventud. Esos momentos eran mágicos y nos unían como familia. Siempre recordaré con cariño esos veranos en el campo, llenos de risas, aprendizajes y amor. All right. Excellent. So, pan casero means homemade bread. Yeah, right up here. Pan casero, homemade bread. All right. And if you didn't know this word, um, this verb, trepar, trepar means to climb. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we would climb trees and pick fruits. Okay. A continuar. So now it's time for homework. I really hope that this video has been, you know, great for you you have been benefiting and that you have learned something and you know your doubts or whatever doubts de, uh, dudas que tenían i hope that you know they're all gone see sí. vamos you're all gone disappeared all right so for your homework you can work in pairs or groups in pairs or groups, make a checklist of the things that your partner or partners did as a child or as children. Write a report about these activities. 
The title should be, for example, cuando Andrew era más joven, or Andrew como niño, or an, cuando Andrew y Shakira eran más jóvenes, or Andrew y Shakira como niños. So see questions for the checklist on the next slide. So I'm going to give you um, possible questions. You can even come up with your own. So these are just you know possible questions that could be on your checklist for doing this activity. Now, the other activity that you could do is to create a dialogue or comic strip using the structure que hacías como niño o que hacías, que hacías cuando eras más joven. So, ¿qué hacías como niño o niña? O, ¿qué hacías cuando eras más joven? So, the dialogue should include but not be limited to greetings, questions, and answers about the things you and your partner or partners used to do as a child or as children. And a farewell. So, that's um, it for today, guys. Here are the questions as promised. I hope today was, you know, great for you. You have learned something. And I am going to encourage you to keep practicing. Remember that. La práctica hace el maestro. So, and don't forget also to subscribe and share, you know. And if you have any um, anything on your mind, you can always comment what you'd like me to do next, what, you know, what I could do differently. Or you can share what you know too, you know, provide your own examples too of um, uh, sentences in imperfect tense. You can also share with me other videos that you may want me to do, you know, that will be of benefit to you and your friends. All right, so let's go through the questions. So these are the possible questions that could be on your checklist. ¿Qué escuela asistías cuando era más joven? ¿Dónde vivías? ¿Cuál era tu canción favorita? O oh, could be, ¿cuál era tu comida favorita? ¿Cuánto pesabas? ¿Qué te gustaba comer? All right, so all the best on that. And I would love for you to share with me in the comments what you, you know, what you and your friends did for this activity. Okay, so gracias por su atención. Fue mi placer, como siempre. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. That's it for today. And of course, this video was created with the Microsoft PowerPoint application. Adios. Ciao, ciao.